Hey YouTube, it's Jay. So today we're doing route number five. That is the side to side. It's not really a route, but we do it often enough that I had to include it somewhere. And so this is where I'm including it. This is moving from one end of the table to the other and doing it by bouncing back and forth side to side. Um, before I do, uh, I, first I wanna thank you. Uh, we just hit a thousand subscribers. Officially, I am now a YouTube partner. Um, what does that mean? Well, that means that I'm allowed to stick ads in my videos. But, I work in, on the internet. Been in IT for a long, long time. Um, went through the dot coms, went through all that stuff. And I will tell you right now, I feel like the internet is saturated with advertising. Um, and, and we're going to get to this, and I'm just, real quick, just to let you know what's going on. Um, YouTube has a policy that says that if I don't monetize videos, they will, and they'll just keep the money. Well, so I have a choice. I can not monetize, and YouTube will, uh, and they'll keep all the money for themselves. Or I can add ads into videos and uh, part of the money will go to me, part of the money will go to them. Um, I think that there's a balance here uh, where what I will do is for the first month or two after a video comes out, it will be ad free. Uh, and then once it's older, then I'll put ads on it and the money that I get from that, um, I will, uh, I'll find a charity or something to give it to. Uh, I, I, I just have a real problem with the idea of trying to help other people to get better at pool and having money come into me for it. Um, if I was giving you lessons, yeah, that's a whole other story. And someday we may do a members area where you can send in videos and I'll do reviews on them and we'll share those reviews among the whole members group uh, so that everybody can learn from it. But for right now, um, I'm not eligible for that, by the way, so I can't start that. Uh, but um, for the short term, uh, I, I feel like the people who are following, who are watching the videos as soon as they come out, uh, for, for you folks, I think that uh, you should be rewarded for that. And, and so for the first, like I said, month or two, no ads on a video. And then once it get, gets past a couple of months, then, then I'll turn ads on on the video. So anybody catching up will have to go through the ads. Uh, with that said, let's move on to our route. I just wanted to let you know what's going on uh, and why you may occasionally run into an ad. Um, I will not keep that money if I ever actually make money at it. Uh, that money will go to a charity, uh, probably a military themed one. Um, that's just where it'll go. So when I'm talking about a side to side route, I'm talking about these kinds of routes where you're going to come off the rail, come off the other rail and into position or off the rail, off the rail down here for position. I'm talking about moving the cue ball around the table uh, by coming off the side rails and going back and forth. So like that one. So not really a lot to say about this because how it, how it moves off the rails is, is different based on your speed, based on the angle of the shot, based on the spin that you put on it. So what I'm going to do, instead of trying to tell you, hey, this diamond goes to that diamond, because it probably won't, I'm just going to tell you some things that I take as general guidelines. So first of all, the first thing you have to understand about this is that there is a difference in the result, not in what the cue ball is doing, but in the result based on whether you are under 45 degrees, and this is measured to the ghost ball, not to the actual ball. So in this case, it's actually 45 degrees from right here behind it, where ghost ball. Okay, 
So about 45 degree angle to the ghost ball. Okay. Um, if you're on this side, it does one, the, the cue ball, the, the result of the English is different than it is on this side. And that's just simply because of the angle you're spinning. You, you can really see how that works inside the video on rail effects. Um, basically, if I'm over here, let me just, uh, I'm just going to chalk park a couple of positions real quick so we can set it up exactly the same. Okay. Get rid of my ghost ball. I don't need it anymore. I just put it there so you can see it. So here's my second position. And we'll just go to the same distance on the other side of the 45 and say, here's my third position. Okay. I know you probably can't see those, but I have chalk marks on the table so I can set it back up exactly the way it is. All right. If I shoot this with 630 English, I hit it really low and a little bit of side spin. It will hit the ball, it will come up this way, it will spin off the rail, and it will come out here. Okay? And there's actually a drill for this that shows it really well. It, it may come out here because I've got kind of a funky angle, but uh, yeah, so it came over here. All right, you saw where that was going? If I hit it more towards 730, Now it comes up here. And if I hit it out at 830, just a little bit more English, it's going to come up that way. I may even scratch it inside. Let's see what happens there. We're going to hit this at 830. So, so stun at maximum right. So you see, the more spin you put, the more it comes out this way, right? That, that was my, my point there. Now, because this angle coming into the rail, it's exactly the same angle, right? The engine line doesn't move. So we're coming into the same angle, but the spin relative to the shot, so when I hit it with 830 English, my spin, relative to the shot, put me on an angle like so, right? Well now, if I hit that, six, I'm sorry, with 630, if I hit that same shot with 630 here, it's not gonna go down here, it's gonna come up here. We know that, right? I mean, that's kind of obvious. Um, and that's because the spin on the cue ball relative to the shot, it's going this way, so when it hits the rail, it's going to tend to come straight back up that line. When I was over here, and I hit it with 630, okay, I was hitting it at 630, which meant that the spin here was going this way. So when I hit it, it hits the rail and it comes down here, just like you saw. So you're really just going to have to get a feel for this, okay? Now there, and, and here's seven, just, just, I'm sorry, it's not 6.30, I'm shooting at 5.30, 5.30, and 3.30. Uh, so I'm on the other side of the cue ball. I was, I was wrong about that. I will put that in the, in the text so you can see that. So here, if I shoot 7.30, what I want you to notice about that, I know I missed the shot, what I want you, here's what I want you to notice about this. I'm gonna, gonna point it out here in just a second, but I want you to notice how the result is different, okay? Now I'm going to hit it at that 330 point, just below center, stun and maximum right.
Okay? Here's what I want to point out about that. When we were shooting and under a 45 degree angle from the first position we shot from, as I put more side spin on it, it went further to the side. So when I put 530 on it, it went here and down here, right? When I put uh, 430 on it, it went here and down there, over that way, right? And when I put um, 330 on it, it went here and it went over here, hit higher up. So at less than a 45 degree angle, if, if we talk about that as the angle to the rail behind the ghost ball, just, just for the sake of illustrating this, we're actually going to the ghost ball. If this angle is less than 45 degrees, the more spin you, the more side spin you put on it, the further on that, further up this rail it goes. But from more than 45 degrees, the more spin I put on it, the further down the rail it went, right? Because when I hit it from here with 530, it went right here. When I hit it with 430, it went right there, and when I hit it with 6, 530, or uh, sorry, 330, it went right here. So, a less than 45 degrees angle, the more side spin you put on it, the further up the rail it goes, okay? More than 45 degrees, the more side spin you put on it, the further down the rail it goes. I see people do this all the time. And by the way, for those that are kind of newer to the channel, the focus on this series is getting people from D, C, and B up to being A players. Okay, folks that are A players and above, you're going to know some of these things. You're going to have learned them by experience. This is trying to explain some things to help people get better at the game and be more competitive. Um, so I know that I know that if you've been shooting for a while, you know this. But basically, it's 45 degrees is your is your delimiter. Okay. The further away, the more exacerbated it is, um, up to the point where you just barely touch the rail. So if I'm shooting from here, I'm going to get further down here. My second shot's going to go this way, and my third shot's going to go this way. First shot being the five. 30, the second shot being the 430, the third shot being the 330. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to observe about this. I okay. got that. Okay, that's 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 tip number one on side to side. Tip number two. If this object ball is close to the rail, doesn't have to be on it, but if it's close to it, and it's between one half of a diamond and one and a half diamonds on the rail, you do not want to shoot this with top English. Okay. Top English, this is called, uh, Ray Martin called this the poison shot, because with top English, you're driving the cue ball towards this pocket. It may, may or may not go in, but you're sending it towards it. Okay? Didn't go in, but you saw it was right there. It got caught in the jaws. If I was trying to get around the table, that would have been bad. If I hit that a little bit harder, if I shoot that just a little bit harder, right in. It's called the poison shot. If you're between half a diamond and one and a half diamonds, you do not want to use top English on it. Okay, what you want to do is use bottom English. Even if you want to go this way, you use bottom inside English. So in this case, bottom left hand English. That will take the cue ball to the end rail. See? No chance of scratch. You can scratch in the side but you're not driving the cue ball intentionally towards the corner pocket. So, do not go forward from this spot. Go, you, or do not, do not use top English from this spot. Likewise, if you're between two and a half and three and a half diamonds, 
and the cute and the object ball is somewhere close to the rail, don't draw this. Okay? You have to use side spin if you're going to shoot this shot and come backwards. If you shoot this with direct just withdraw, there are two different pockets you can scratch in. Do not shoot that shot with draw. Shoot it with top. Okay? If you're trying to get down to that end of the table from here, make sure that if you do use draw, you use a lot of outside English, in this case, right side English. So if I shoot this all the way out with that bottom right, that, that 330 hit, now I get what I want. You see that? If it's between one and a half and two and a half diamonds, never draw it. This is the most common scratch on the Pro Tour that is not a break shot or an unlucky kiss. You will see pros scratch like that in the sides more often than any other shot uh, that they actually shoot and make that has no incidental contact. Uh, do not straight draw this ball if it's between two and a half and three and a half. Now for you A players out there, you know what this looks like, you know what your stroke can do, you can probably get away with this, but I would still say put that outside English on it and make it go away from the sides. Remember, we never want to hit within a half a diamond of the side, which means that from there to there, we don't want to hit that. This area right here, we don't want to hit that area, right? This shot automatically sends you right here. And if you draw it, it sends you somewhere in that neighborhood. Put that outside English on it and get it out of that scratch, okay? It's another version of the poison shot. By the way, the poison shot also happens down here where you shoot it and it comes up into this corner. Um, it's actually from the first diamond to the second diamond uh, with top English will take you in there. Uh, so those, those are some tips for that particular shot. Um, the next one, we're going to talk about when to use each of the five routes that have come up. Uh, and then the video following that, I'm going to be doing one on advanced leave zones. Okay, so I showed you the basic leave zones. There's a, a whole uh, playlist. There's a series of them on leave zones. <clears throat> Those are the basic description of leave zones. Next, I'm going to show you how to really use leave zones because it's a little bit different and I think you're going to love where we go with it. Uh, and I haven't seen it explained anywhere. So, uh, so for now, have a great day. We'll catch you next time. Don't forget, like, subscribe, ding the notification bell. Thank you again for a thousand subscribers. Uh, and I'm very humbled that, uh, and, and pleased that I'm helping people. Uh, and so with that, I'll let you go. Have a great day. We'll catch you next time.